Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Seminars with Millennial Who Talks, episode number nine. Woo, we are changing lives and inspiring others with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the United States. So, just a little reminder we're doing things a little bit different today. Uh, we have a robot that's watching the broadcast. And if you type Millennial Who in the comments at any point, you'll subscribe to our broadcast. We promise we're not going to spam you. We're only going to tell you when we're going live with Millennial Who Talks. If you like what you hear at any point in time, share the broadcast, okay? Or if you like what you hear and you think somebody else should be listening in, you can tag them in the comments as well, whether it's a friend, a colleague, maybe somebody you don't like, you can still tag them in the comments. Oh. And, and get them in. So, well, you know, sometimes it's, it's getting that enemy to become a friend of me and then eventually a friend. So True. we're here today with Kim. I'm going to say Kim Z because I don't want to mess up her last name. Perfect. From the, the great state of Nebraska. How are you doing today, Kim? Great. It's beautiful here. We haven't had any snow yet, which I love. So perfect. You haven't had any yet? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm from upstate New York. We've had about a couple feet already. <laughs> we're, just, we're just getting started. But let's get right into you know introductions, who you are, you know where you're from exactly in Nebraska, and then where you started on your real estate journey. All righty. Well, I am Kim Zweener is how you say that. So, you okay. know, whatever. I like KZ. That's good. Um, I am practicing in Lincoln. So that is our state capital. It is our second largest city in the state. Um, so that, um, you know, there's about so about 700 agents in our market. Um, how I got started in real estate, I, um, in 2005, I was an elementary school teacher and had been for the last five years. And the first day that I walked into school on that um, August 2005 day, I said, I am done with this career. I just don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> So I knew that I had about, oh, 11 months to figure it out because that's when my last paycheck would be. Um, so I didn't really uh, uh, look too hard at first. And then in the spring, I was in the, a gas station having a conversation with the husband of the realtor who sold us our house. And he said, well, why don't you get your real estate license? And I said, oh, okay, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I had no business Let's experience whatsoever. Um, would have, if I knew what I was getting into, then there is no way I would have done it. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> no idea. Oh, uh, so well, I. <laughs> let, me, let me just, I don't want to interrupt, but let me ask you this. So, what prompted. What was the breaking point for you as an elementary school teacher where you said, I'm done with this? Was it a student? Was it an incident? Or just, I'm done? I don't, I don't think it was a specific incident. I think I had had my second child and I was just thinking, you know, I have my own babies now. I don't really need to be involved with other people's anymore. So... <laughs> I loved my kids and I'm still on fa Facebook is amazing because all of my kids are like 22, 23, getting married, having kids. Um, so I've kept that good relationship with them. So future clients for sure. Um, right. But I think, I don't know. I just, it was just a pull. Like it wasn't challenging enough, honestly, I think for me was really, which I didn't realize at that time that evolved um, I'm somebody who's always moving forward, I'm um, mm -hmm. always going to the next goal, always want to challenge myself. And I think I just felt like I had conquered everything I needed to within that career. So it was just kind of time. I just don't think about things. I just do things. <laughs> you're impulsive is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, I'm very impulsive. <laughs> if <laughs> so I would have stopped and th thought, what does real estate really mean? Like, what do I need to succeed in that industry? I would not. I would have been frozen by fear. What's the licensing requirements in Nebraska? Like how many hours? Um, it's uh, 60 hours, so two classes. 
Okay. And then um, sit for the exam, which right now our pass rate is about 24%, I think. Which, 24? Um, yeah. Yep. So it's a tough, tough uh, test. But back in um, 06, so I've been licensed 12 years now. Um, yeah, I just took the study prep class and went in and nailed it and First went try. to the office. Yep. Yep. Okay. You're part of that 26%, so right off the bat, you're already <laughs> selling in the industry. <laughs> right, because we all know that the real estate test um, requirements has everything that prepares you from day one. <laughs> you pass that test, and you are ready to you're go. Good. Yep. Yeah, it's our chasm. Right. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about then that, that first year. What was that like? Where did you, did you start it? Like a big brokerage? What was... You know, I started at a very big brokerage. Um, Lincoln is kind of weird in the fact that when I talk to people from other places, you know, there's companies, there's no one company that dominates the market. So, you know, all the big companies have, you know, maybe 5% market share. Well, when I started 12 years ago, um, the company I started with had 80% market share. So it was 80%. really the... 80%. So wow. really the only um, option. Plus I live a little ways out of town in a very small town that doesn't even have a grocery store. <laughs> and that particular office was closest to my house. And so at that time I could get to that office without going through a stoplight, which was a huge value proposition <laughs> for me. That, that one stoplight made all the difference. You need it, to do, does. Right? it does. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So my first year looked like me sitting there feeling like I'm completely in over my head and I have about three months to start making money until I get my last paycheck from teaching. So um I went to the office every day, even though I had nothing to do. And I attribute my success to that one act completely. My advice for any new professional is to go to the office, especially if you have a busy office and just sit there because you will find things to do. You will engage in conversations, talk to your broker, ask lots of questions I took the cubicle closest to the copy machine. So I would suggest everyone to do the same because there's lots of activity at the copy machine. Everybody is there running their papers. You can talk to people, find out what they're doing, get inspired, get ideas, and then go execute them. So that was good. You went to the office. You know, like how many people were in the office approximately or on um, any given Usually we had, I don't know, there was a good dozen core group that were there. There were private offices and then cubicles. So, um, yeah, I would say usually a dozen. And then on meeting days, of course, you know, you have 40 or 50 maybe. So, Okay. I mean, that brings up a good point for those who are get, just getting started in real estate. You don't have much to do, but you should still get dressed and go to work. Every yep. single day. I mean, if you're getting paid by the hour, you had a salary, you still have to go into work. Right. You know? yep. so it's, it's, it's amazing how lucky you can be if you're prepared and you're in the right, <laughs> in the right situation. Right. Yes. Now, yeah. did you guys have, yeah. did you guys have office time or anything like that? We did have that office. Could... Yep. And we could sign up for that. And, you know, it was a good experience. There weren't a lot of calls coming in on that. I probably sold maybe one off of that. Um, in my first couple of years. But again, it's just doing all of those activities. And when you're in that space, use that time to, you know, read articles or learn more or talk to people. So um, yeah, it was a great experience. So at what point <clears throat> now you're at an office that you said 80% market share, which is like, any market I've I've talked to folks, it's like that's huge. Eighty percent. It's almost like there's no other options, like a monopoly. <laughs> what what at what point did you say I'm gonna make a move and like how uh, how challenging was that? I mean you're impulsive, well, so you just said one day I'm gonna make a move. 
Yeah, it wasn't just the one office. So they have offices all over town, but it's the one company that had that. Right. So, okay, I need to back up just a little bit. From being in the office and showing my work ethic and just showing up and suiting up and show, showing up, like Jim Vanis just said. Hi, Jim. Um, I think really it caught the eye of other experienced agents and I was very lucky to be able to join. Okay. Now we're talking 2007, 2008 now after I've done this for a year and a half to join an REO team within the brokerage. So um, the team okay. lead recognized what I was doing, knew I worked hard and asked me to join his team. Um, you know, that's right. When, <laughs> when those REOs were ramping up and we were running about 40 properties here in Lincoln, Nebraska, you know, at a time. So I was the contract coordinator for that team. And we were dealing back then with, you know, 10, 12, 17 offers on any given property. And you have 10 or 12 listed. That's a full-time job right there. So um, that was kind of how that rolled out. So when we decided to break off and go on our own, the bulk of our business was REO and we just decided, you know, this is all coming in to us and we're running all this as a team and we're still paying all the fees that are involved mm -hmm. and we think we can do this on our own without that. So uh, in 2010, February 1st, 2010, we opened the doors with my business partner, me and his son, who was a licensed agent at that time, um, and just did our own thing. It was um, it was a big risk. But for me, coming from being a teacher to only, you know, I did a million three my first year, so not huge production. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I made more than I did when I was teaching, but <laughs> not a lot more. So I had nothing to lose, really. So I just, again, as we talked about earlier, I don't really think things through. I just jump. So <laughs> just said, let's do it. Let's do it. Well, I mean, I would think it was a good time being that was there, I mean, was your market inundated with, with foreclosures? Was there a high supply of them or was yes. that the only thing that was selling at the time? No, um, our new construction had completely ceased to exist. Like there were shells standing on lots that stayed that way for years. So um, it was definitely a big part of the market, the REOs. And um, so that really, without that, we probably wouldn't have been able to do that even at that time. But yeah, there was, that was a good chunk of our market then. Okay, so that was 2010. You started with a business partner and a team of how many? There were three of us. Just the three of us. <laughs> yep. We can make it if we try. No, um, <laughs> sorry, sometimes I just start singing. It's That's all right. Me too, me too. That's cool. Okay, um, so now you're, you've grown and the market share has shifted a little bit in, in your area, right? Is that? Yes, yep. So I think uh, people just started coming to us and saying, hey, can we join you? And we're like, okay. Again, I have a different story. When I watch people tell their story about, oh, I've always wanted to be a realtor, blah, blah, blah. I love houses, blah, blah, blah. That is not me. I, my story is way different. I just, I just go with the flow. And if things are working, I you know, go with them. And if they aren't, I change. So um, anyway, people were coming and asking us to join our team and we go, okay, you know, we'll take whoever, let's just set up a split and do this. And um, so a couple of years later, we were up to about 13 agents and there was no plan. It just kind of organically happened which I don't know if this is really helpful information for people because Absolutely. I don't plan, <laughs> but I am really into organically, you know, growing and just being who you are and people will be attracted to that. Um, but in 2014, 
we decided to buy into our cell state franchise. It's a national franchise. Okay. So um, when we did that, we moved offices to the south part of town, which is for some reason the agents in our um, in our community like to work south of O Street, which is the major um, east west street going through our town. So we're like, okay, well, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this and be where the agents want us to be. So we um, we found some space down south and started our cell state brand and. We're up to 26 agents now, so we just kind of continue to grow slowly, which, um, hey, Ray, sorry, <laughs> organic growth. Yes, Ray, organic growth is good. Um, and just loving it. And our market, oh, your question was market share. So um, I think since then, our, our Lincoln market has completely shifted to more smaller brokerages um, that the the big player in town will always be the big player and they have amazing value and offer great things to their agent. But I think our industry as a whole has been changing. Um, I mean, I've been in it 12 years, so I know there's always the highs and lows, but I really see our market changing a lot in the last Mm, four or five years more than it had in the past. And that's attributed to technology. When I started, we were still faxing offers. <laughs> like, what's a scanner? <laughs> and now we don't even meet our clients most of the time because we just get e-signatures and do phone calls and conference calls and Marco Polo and, you know. So with that shift in our industry of technology, Um, I really think a lot of younger people have come into the market and they want a different kind of brokerage. They're used to doing business in a different way. Um, So I think that there's room for a lot of business models and it's the diversity is really great for our industry, I think. So when you say like, okay, we didn't plan to recruit all these people and it was organic growth. There's something that attracted these agents to your brokerage, right? I mean, it has to be like, what are your, if you had to say, these are our core values, this is what we care about at, at, at our office. And this is why people are attracted to us. What would, what would that be? Because I think it's important for other people to hear it. Cause I'm all about organic growth. I can't take another recruiting call from somebody saying, <laughs> come to our company. Uh, and it's like, if I wanted to come to your company, we would be having a conversation. Right. Right. Um, I think uh, two things really, we're very agent centric, which we don't have a lot of top down rules. There's guidelines that they need to follow as agents. And of course the code of ethics and all that good stuff. But um, we really are, the business is about the agent's business. And we realize that the consumers use their advisor or their agent based on the person that they are not based on their company name. So when all my agents ask me, you know, what should I do? Should I put my name on this? Yes. Put your name on that. Like, I don't want that phone call. You want that phone call. Um, So I think also my involvement, I'm very, very involved locally at the state level as well as nationally. And um, hi, Eric. Yeah, Eric just said um, integrity and knowledge. Thanks for that. Eric is one of, he's my go-to title guy. So um, yeah, I mean, just being involved in other agents, seeing what I'm doing and drawn to the energy of our office, I think just, you know, they just, they like that and they like the one-on-one time that I give them. So I don't really have a formal training program because we're growing kind of slowly. So it's not like I have a big recruiting class coming in that I can do a formal class with. So I always just tell them, you know, let's just talk about it. What do you got going on? We'll just learn as we go. So um, that's kind of the way we approach it. I think, and just in just perusing the you know online photos that I found of of the office and the and the, it seems like it's like a fun family type environment, right? And and you're more yes. of like a, you said what did you call it, boss lady? Less like a boss lady, but 
you know, more like I could see you being like a macro manager, just sitting back like, okay, if you have questions, come in, but I'm not going to try to tighten yes. the screws on you and ask you how many appointments you have and how many leads you're working or anything yep. like that. Yep. Yeah. If you're, if you're not a self-starter, I'm probably not the place you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you take a little responsibility and I will answer any question all day long, day or night, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'll help you. I'll so, help you figure out what you need to do, but yeah. Kimberly Santiago said authenticity. Correct. So, so a good one. All right. So then let's get into leadership. You're, you're, saying that you are a local as well as state and national like what what made you get involved like at what point did you say you know what I, I need to get into leadership because or did you again just say well you know what I'm going to get into leadership today <laughs> yep exactly <laughs> what okay yeah that sounds great <laughs> again I don't think ahead of where this is going to lead me I just do it because it feels like the right thing to do so I came from a very small town in central Nebraska. I grew up with, in a town of about 500 people. We're about 70 miles from the closest Walmart. Um, my graduating class was four people. And <laughs> so you are just involved in everything. I mean, you play volleyball, you play basketball, you do one act, you're in National Honor Society. <laughs> You just do everything. And so I, I attribute my success now to that um, atmosphere growing up. And so when I started, when did YPN start? What year? Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I think I, I think I, I was in the business no. before it started. Um, but I don't know, I just went to a meeting and it was cool. And I liked to be able to be um, on the planning side of things and understand how the organization worked. Um, so I just, it was just really a natural evolution. I was involved with YPN for three or four years pretty heavily. And now you got to understand this is back in 2008, 2009, 2010, when the market was horrible horrible so there were no young professionals in our market at that time there right. were like three of us we're a board of well then we our board was maybe four or five hundred then but under 30 certainly maybe two and those were because their parents were in the industry so they got in and um under 40, you know, maybe a handful. So there just weren't any. So it was a few of us blazing the trails of what we wanted this to look like and be for our community. Um, and now it's amazing how many young people are in our business. There are tons and tons and they're, they're just flooding more and more um, the young professionals. So I think that's amazing. Um, now that the market's better, that we're getting more young professionals in who are looking at this as a career. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing a lot of like people just right out of college starting as, yep. as this, their first career rather than, oh, I was laid off or something like that, which we see, you know, used to see in years past. <clears throat> so what do you, on the national level, your YPN is where? Um, I've oh, kind of really like, backed like What off. else are you involved in? Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I really backed off the YPN because I felt like it's kind of one of those things where you build it up and then you kind of just have to let it go. Like, <laughs> like I didn't want to control the, right. I didn't want to control the direction that they wanted to take it, the newer agents. So um, I'm on our association board of directors and have been for a couple of years. And I just this year, um, you have to go through a nomination process and an interview process to go through our exec committee to go to the chairs. So I was appointed secretary this year and I will have to reapply for treasurer next year. And after I nail that, then I will move up to president <laughs> in a few years. Um, and so, and then I'm uh, involved in a lot of our committees. So our housing advocacy committee, uh, I've been involved with. I've pretty much, oh, I'm co-chair of our governmental affairs committee. 
But again, I like to know how things work. So I want to have spent time on all of those committees so I know what they do. And, um, you know, some of them you get more excited about than others. But just learning the workings of it uh, and how how the association operates is important for me, especially as a broker now, um, so that I can advise my agents and stay on the cutting edge of what's going on. And then statewide, we have a convention committee that I was really active with planning our convention. Um, I've been on lots of task forces and strat planning for both local and state. Right now we're working on a task force that's um, – deciding whether or not we should have licensing requirements for our home inspectors. So that's been really interesting. And then on the national level, I'm appointed as the RPAC Participation Council for mm -hmm. um, the state of Nebraska. So getting everyone to invest in their business by investing in RPAC. Realtor Political Action Committee, for those who don't yes. know what RPAC stands for. <laughs> I'm a Sterling R myself, big believer. Nice work. So ha have there been challenges as you go through and, and you, you want to be part of these committees and chairs? And, you know, like you said, you had to be nominated and yes. appointed, depending on what the position is. What are some of the challenges you've encountered being a younger person in the <laughs> business? And how did you overcome those? Yeah, that was a very frustrating process. I applied for board of directors three times before I got on. So um, I know that I probably wasn't ready the first time I applied, but it's still frustrating um, because I felt like I was ready and I felt like, why aren't they seeing this inside me? And I, I didn't realize that I really needed to polish myself a little bit before I got on. The way with our board of directors works is you fill out an application. And then if you get selected for an interview, you sit in front of 12 of your peers. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was very intimidating, especially the first time going in. Um, so again, being involved in the committees so that that nominating committee knows who you are. As the longer you're involved, the more they see you and know you on a personal level. So you're not walking into that interview, you know, unknown. They know you. So um, that was a huge challenge. Just everybody looks at me and thinks that I was an overnight success. And they don't realize this is my 12th year. I have been very um, vocal about what I want, but also patient in getting there. So when I finally got on board of directors, then the next year I started applying for secretary position <laughs> and I applied for that for three more years. So I have been doing interviews for six years. Um, so I, again, it's just, you have to be involved. You can't just expect to get those um, kind of positions because you have a dynamic personality or because you think you should you have to put the work in to get back what you want out of it. Great point. Not to stereotype the younger generation, but sometimes they feel like I'm at this bottom rung of the ladder. I don't see why I can't go to the very top next year. Yep. You know, like, what do you mean I have to go through these steps? And I think it's a, it's a great point. If you see anybody in leadership or anybody that's a, there's, there's no overnight success. Yep. It may seem like it, but yep. like you, you're saying, three years to get on the board, and I had I had did the same thing. Three years to get on the board, and another three years to get that secretary position. I'm on like five probably for that. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's it's put in the work, but you also yep. gain the experience, the knowledge, and the leadership skills, right? To to yes. be an effective yep. person in that position. So, yep. The journey is as important as the destination, I think. It is. Good message. Yeah. Well, looking back now, I just think like, oh, man, I thought I was ready, but I really wasn't. And I really believe in God's time too. you know, call whatever your higher power you want to call it. I don't care what you call it. But um, I think just there's a time and there's a reason and whatever is going to be happening in our industry in three years when I'm local president is what's going to be best for my skill set and I'm just super excited to be involved and continue to build relationships. And I just want to point out, if you're watching this right now, 
if you listen to Kim and how she phrases her goals, it's not like I hope to be president someday. It's when I am president because she already sees it. Okay, just listen to how she, ah, it's great. It's really good stuff. And you may not even realize that you're doing it. It's just, you've probably done it for so many years, but I just want to point that out to anybody that might be watching. It's not if, it's when. If you have your mindset, you know, you're, you believe you can achieve. It's great, great, great message. Here. Well, well, this year when I went into interviews, I said, okay, guys, you know, at the end, they're like, what do you, what do you want to say? And I said, you know what, this is my third year interviewing for this. If you decide I'm not the woman for the job this year, then I'll be back next year. So it's your decision, whether you want to do it now or later, it's up to you, but I'm here for the long haul. So <laughs> like, whenever you think it's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, you know, you can accept me now or else you're going to see it and again and again. Yep. Isn't that a country song? I'm, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul or something. I don't know. All right. So we're, we're getting to our 30 minute mark and I, we can't leave without asking you if you were back in 2005, you came back and you visited the Kim of real estate past <laughs> and said, you know, if you could give yourself advice or even a new agent starting in the business, you know, here's a little nugget of information to help you be successful and help make it in the industry. You know, what would, what would be your advice for them? For I think yourself? I would say, look at the adversity that you have already overcome in your life. You're alive, you're breathing, you're here now. You have nothing to lose. And even if you lose, you have nothing to lose because you just start again. I, I, I don't know. I just, when something bad happens, you just keep moving forward. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just see bad, bad things as opportunities. So I think I would just say, be the badass that you are. Can I say that? It's kind you can of say whatever you want. Nice. <laughs> be the badass that you are and always move forward and just roll with the punches. If something comes up, then deal with it. But don't worry about that it might. Wait until it actually happens and then solve your problem. So I don't know. I'm pretty optimistic. Well, I like that. That's going to be the quote of the day. Be the badass that you are. Okay. Right. You heard it here from KZ. <laughs> it's going to be your hashtag from now on. Yes. On business cards. I really like that. <laughs> I really believe that everybody is like, I really truly believe that everyone is a badass. Be yourself, be your uniquely you and just go do it. You know, I think in just this 30 minutes that we've been conversating in that, you know, I think one of the, your greatest assets is that you're true to who you are. You know, like you, you're, you're a real person online. I'm sure if I met you when I do meet you in person at some point in my life, that you'll be the same person that we saw online in the video. So I just want to thank you for taking, you know, 30 minutes out of your day. It's quite obvious why you guys are doing so great. And you have so many agents that look to the boss lady um, and, and they trust to you, I'm sure. And, and, and the company and all the great things that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Um, thank you. Anything in, 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 you know, you want to say it here to close it out? No, nope, just go seize the day. Like, you know what you've got to do. Go do it. All right. And here's your round of applause. Everybody, the 15 people watching this, 20 people watching this, show us some love. Hit the hearts. <laughs> hit the hearts. Hit the comments. And thanks so much again, Kevin. Take care. Thank you.